Hey everyone, Flo from Off to Lens here, and today we're going to talk about the Greyjoy 35mm T2.9 anamorphic lens. So this is a second anamorphic lens from Greyjoy that I've used, and in this video we'll talk about my experience shooting with it, what I like it or like about it, how does it compare to the 50mm, and whether or not I would recommend it. As always, before I start, don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this one, and let's get into it. Disclaimer, Greyjoy did send me this lens to keep, but as always, this is my honest opinion and they did not get to modify the content of this video. As I mentioned in my previous review of the 50mm, shooting anamorphic for me is more about the look and the feel rather than trying to fit more in the frame or have crazy flares. Since this one is wider, I wanted to concentrate on landscape, indoor, general travel content, as well as personal. And I also film people in a documentary style since it is a type of work that I do a lot of. I shot everything mostly between T2.9 and 5.6 at 24fps and 60fps. Now let's get into the lens itself. So this lens is a 35mm T2.9. It can be used on full frame sensors as well as Super 35 sensors like my 6K and 6K Pro. This one arrived with a PL mount and an EF mount, so I swapped it for the EF mount since I use it on the 6K. But you can pretty much get it in any mount that you want, E, MFT, L, RF, which is great. As you can see, the real element is quite different from the 50mm. It sticks out a lot less. It still does work on a 6K Pro, even with the NDs, they are fine. However, I'm still not sure if I can use this lens on a DSLR that would have any adapters on it, like a speed booster, since they have a glass element at the back. The lens is solidly built and weighs just over a kilo. Same as the 50mm, it features an 82mm front thread and has industry standard 0.8 pitch keys. In addition to this 35mm and 50mm, there will also be an 85mm. You can find more info on the lens in the description below. As with my previous video, there are a few things that I want to mention before I start. So first of all, I think to get the full potential of this lens, as with the 50mm, you need to probably use this on a full frame 4x3 aspect ratio camera, such as the Panasonic cameras. That way you can actually get with the 1.8D squeeze, a 2.4 to 1 aspect ratio file without having to crop with any vignetting. So even though my 6K has a built-in anamorphic mode, I still prefer to shoot in 6K RAW to get a full sensor, as I felt like I was losing way too much on the sides. So in terms of gears this time, I wanted to use my 6K Pro as well as the 6K. With the 6K Pro, I used the kit as is. I only had the lens and the camera. I had no extra battery pack, no monitor, nothing at all. Because I wanted to see if I could actually use an anamorphic lens as a travel camera, a personal camera, and carry only that. So this is what I used for a full day. I like that it was relatively small, but it made it a lot harder to avoid a micro jitters, for example. And since I also didn't have a monitor, I had to look at a squashed image uh, for the whole day. I still used the D-Squeeze, the inbuilt D-Squeeze 1.3, but still. For the rest of the shots, I use my 6K with a 7-inch monitor, a Tilta Mini Focus, as well as a matte box and my Nissi filters. You can find all the links in the description below. I also decided not to crop the sides to get a 2.4 to 1 aspect ratio. I left the super wide original ratio, which is what you get using a 16 by 9 Super 35 sensor. And since I shot in B-Raw, all I had to do was import the files in DaVinci and hit the 1.8D squeeze and I was it. So now let's talk about the things that I like about this lens. First of all, the image. I really like the image that comes out of this 35mm. I love the soft edges, the overall look, the bokeh when shooting wide open. And I also really like the fact that the flares are not crazy. Some of the shots I took with this lens are some of my favorites I ever shot. I've filmed mountains for years, but they rarely look that beautiful. The shots in the church, because I've been asked a lot about it, were shot at ISO 3200, and I really loved the look that the lens gave to the scene. With all my shots, I was able to grade them easily, and to be completely honest with you, even without the grading, you still get that beautiful and organic look that the lens gives you. Secondly, I enjoy shooting with a lens. Uh, this is very important to me. Shooting anamorphic is such a unique and still very new experience for me, so I'm very excited every time I use the lens. As I shoot a lot of landscape content, um, this focal length was also better suited than the 50mm. I found this 35mm to be very versatile and works really well when paired with a 50mm. Next is a 1.8 constant squeeze ratio. Um, there was an issue with the 50mm, but with this one, I haven't noticed anything at all, which is great. 
With the 50 mil, I noticed it straight away. Um, with this one, I did a very brief test just to make sure with the phone because it's an item that we are used to see every day. We know the shape. And as you can tell, there's no difference at all even when changing the distance. And of course, as I said, after shooting for a few weeks with it, I didn't notice anything even on people's face or anything like that. I think this is something that people were very worried about the 35 mil so i'm happy to say no issues whatsoever because this was shot as a test footage as well i tried to shoot in very harsh lights and i was very pleased with the results in the shadow when facing harsh lights there's a great retention of detail you also now have on the side markings in both feet and meters which i think is very important and finally the lens feels very solid and very nice to use the focus throw and aperture rings are very smooth and precise. And I also want to mention that breathing is very well controlled. Now let's talk about the things that I don't really like about this lens. The first thing that bothered me the most, I would say, is that it was very, very hard to get any flares at all. With the 50mm it was already tricky to get some noticeable flares, even in pretty harsh and direct light, but I did get some. On the 50mm the amount was okay, and I think for me I prefer to have not enough flares than too much but for someone buying an anamorphic lens to get those flares then in that case the 35 mil doesn't deliver on that side i did try to use a torch on my phone to get any flares but again it was very very hard the second thing that i've noticed is a bit of a white ghosting or white glow i'm not really sure how to explain it when facing harsh light um, it didn't ruin any shots but i thought i would mention it Next is the focus distance. At 0.7 meters, it can be quite a lot. This is something that I wasn't expecting and it didn't really bother me that much while shooting, but I did have to step back a few times and readjust composition for it. I know this isn't the only lens, but I thought it would be worth mentioning. I also found that focusing on T2.9 uh, was a bit harder than the 50 mil for some reason. The image looked a bit softer. I did miss focus a few times, which didn't happen the whole time that I was shooting with a 50 mil. And lastly, as per the 50 mil, if you do use this lens on a 16x9 Super 35 sensor, you will lose the sides if you decide to crop to 2.4 to 1 aspect ratio. You will then lose the swirly edges and keeping the original ratio like I did for the test footage is a bit too much and can't really be used on an actual project, unless of course you need that look. This is of course not the lens's fault, it's a limitation due to the combination of the Super 35 16x9 sensor and this anamorphic lens. Now, will I recommend this lens? Yes, I would absolutely recommend this lens. However, like I said with the 50mm, I think it's important to remember that anamorphic lenses are made for a specific look, so I wouldn't recommend it to people as a general all-purpose lens or as a first lens. But if you do want an anamorphic lens at a reasonable price, this is a very solid option. The image is beautiful, it is a 1.8 times lens which gives you a great look, it is well built and very nice to use. I would mention that even though this is an anamorphic lens, it's not as obvious as the 50mm. This could be from the difference in focal length, but it could also be the fact that I have shot now quite a bit with both lenses and I'm slowly becoming used to the look. Feel free to watch my review of the 50mm as well, where I'll talk more in depth about my experience shooting anamorphic in general. And now, let's just wait for the 85mm. That's it for me for today, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed this review of the Greyjoy 35mm anamorphic lens. Don't forget to subscribe and let me know in the comments if you're thinking of getting this lens or if you're shooting anamorphic. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Also, feel free to check out my new ebook, Freelance Documentary Filmmaking and Introduction where you can find a streamlined but comprehensive overview from pre-production all the way to marketing, built on years of my own experience shooting short documentaries around the world.